the obvious things are not what people observe. The Duffer brothers are not ones to waste time, so honestly, they don't tend to cut too much material from Stranger Things. But there are a lot of choices to be made in the writing room and during filming. Want to find out just how different season four could have been? People just change, okay? I've changed. It's that simple. Number one, we would have revolted if Max went the way of the demo dodo bird. The Duffers weren't always sure what they wanted Max's fate to be, and we could have seen a very different ending to season four if they weren't such sensitive sallies. We'll get into that more in a minute. But in their minds, the danger she was in was real. Just like Eddie, she was fated from the beginning of the season to not make it to the end. But her role in the coma has been hinted at being super important in the next season. Do they know when she'll wake? More mind fights? That's our guess. Do you have a better theory? For Max, it's been really cool. I feel like each season, you kind of see a different side of her. Number two, one of the staples of season four was another last minute addition. Eddie almost didn't have that big Metallica ending. If it wasn't for the pandemic slowing down the filming process, they would have been well into filming the first few episodes before deciding Eddie needed to not just love Metallica, but to be part of a band. So once they decided to add that awesome ending, they got to go back and layer in the band and layer in Eddie's guitar. In that episode one scene with Chrissy, they weren't just able to layer in the band, but we were able to humanize him. We were able to humanize him. Number three, it could have been the Enzo for Enzo. That sounds like a dumb joke Yuri would make. Enzo didn't always make it to the end of the season. Duffers didn't go into too much detail about the situation, but there wasn't much of a reason to off him. So they just decided to let him have his happily ever after. Besides, it gets a little weird when you keep taking out side characters and your main characters consistently just have brushes with the light at the end of the tunnel. They said, I think there was a version where Dimitri, AKA Enzo, didn't make it. Yes, but still alive. Number four, now to deviate to Netflix's weird marketing. Here are a few words about Eddie from, from those closest to him. It's no secret that fans are infuriated about the fate of the coolest character to join the show, one Eddie Munson. But come on, he had the most epic death scene ever, and we should all be so lucky we got to witness it. Well, Netflix, in some sort of cruel form of parody, released a fake eulogy for Eddie. And we will agree, it's tacky, tacky, tacky. Wherever you are, I, I hope you give him hellfire. Except for this great line from Joe Keery. Finally, someone who could compete with such just a beautiful flow. After all the love Joe's hair has received over the years, it's nice to see him acknowledge his competition. Do you think this whole thing was scripted? Like every day I wake up and I'm like, what the heck <laughs> happened? <laughs> Number five, if he were a female praying mantis, maybe the design would have worked. Vecna understands us on a human level. Stranger Things could have been a very different beast altogether if they went with some of their other Vecna concept art. One in particular sticks out as an odd choice with Henry's fascination for spiders. And that was a design that made him look like a praying mantis instead. So we want to know what came first, the intertwined spider plot or the mantis? We can only assume with the look of the Mind Flayer that the spiders were here first. The problem with the Mantis though, was the Duffer Brothers insisted on having a practical design for Vecna. This is really the first time since season one that we're going back to the world of, of prosthetics. And the Mantis was just too darn tall. Creepy though, Vecna did get a little less buggy than he could have been. In one iteration, he had the eyes of a spider too. This character is not chaos. Number six. There were around 50 demos of the demo bat. Seriously, the designs were infinite with this one. Once upon a time, the demo bats were more like demo gorgons and demo dogs than their own thing, with heads and bodies that split open much in the same way. This just wasn't a creative enough choice. Oh, and they also had serrated tails that cut you when they wrapped themselves around you. Unfortunately, this made them just too dangerous and they would have taken out Steve rather than just injure him. And we know how the Duffers feel about that. It's like, it's either what I imagine or it's even better than what I imagine. Number seven, it's better for an actor's financial situation. Millie joked that the showrunners needed to start killing people off, to which Noah agreed. Millie called them sensitive sallies and demanded more Game of Thrones unrelenting offing of characters. Is there some jealousy there? She did once audition for Game of Thrones and 
almost gave up on acting when she didn't land the role. I think I was just very disheartened by the rejection. Matt Duffer said, believe us, we've explored all of it. All options in the writing room, just as a complete hypothetical. You kill Mike, it's like, that's depressing. We're not depressing. We aren't Game of Thrones. Every death on Stranger Things has a lasting impact. Billy, Billy, wake up, Billy, get up, Billy, it's Billy. Every life is worth something, so it's hard for them to take out a character because it changes dynamics. It changes storylines. Barb, Billy, Eddie, the kids in the lab, Alexi, Hopper for a minute and a half. It changes the course of everything. And honestly, the Duffers just don't want to exhaust plot lines around that kind of stuff. Matt carried on, so imagine Mike dying. It's like, is that something we're interested in exploring or not interested in exploring? That's it, this is the beginning of the end. And I, and I read it and I was just bawling, I was so upset. Number eight, there's a ton of subtly unsettling choices here. Time for you to join me. The plan for Vecna's lair at one point leaned very heavily into the idea of the spider's web. By the looks of it, that was a bit impractical to have them dangling from the sky. Imagine filming that. Talk about a head rush. So tying them against pillars via the vines wound up being far more comfortable. But that wasn't the only scrapped design. Designer Michael Marr Jr. described on his website, it might be fun to play with a large vortex where fragments of the house were dissolving along with spires containing rotted victims. Everything would be moving, slowly swirling in a circular motion. The anti-gravity inspiration of this one will come back. The next was inspired by the thriller horror movie, The Cell. Another unsettling description by Michael. In early iterations of the script, Vecna would drag his victims through a blood-filled area on his way to a massive monolithic structure in the distance. You can see the Bekshinsky influence here. Exciting for us in, in that way, that there's a lot of story being uncovered here. Number nine, improv can change the course of a show sometimes. Another moment we almost didn't have was Eddie's final line to Dustin. That, I love you, man, was totally spoken from the heart in the heat of the moment. I love you, man. I love you too. Man, we are not looking forward to seeing Dustin's grieving in the next season. Poor guy's too wholesome for that. Eddie! Number 10. We sincerely don't think we could stomach patchwork Vecna. Especially if they chose this design. He looks like such a happy guy, we doubt we'd be scared at all. The hair idea was scrapped pretty quick though. Do you think they got any of their inspiration from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man? So vampire skin was also on the table. Michael pitched that his skin could be rotting away due to all the time he spent in the Upside Down, and Henry might be trying to clamp it together to try and save it. He also got a cloak in one design, perhaps because it's too easy to recognize who he is in some of them. Gangrene and radiation rot were also popular choices. Oh, and asymmetry was attempted. We can only imagine how any one of these designs may change the look and feel of the show. Number 11. Who would have thought dust could be so fascinating? Dimension X is where Henry lands in the Upside Down. It's where the Mind Flayer exists as a floating, living entity of dust particles. But it wasn't always just swarming like bees. Gravity works differently in this realm. We told you this idea would resurface. And well, the floating rocks were once where these particles came from. Henry would harvest them. However, this idea was too convoluted and wound up scrapped. All I needed was someone to open the door, and he did that for me. Number 12. The designs are far more intimidating than the fish from which they came. We find it a bit odd that for a bit, their inspiration came from fish. Prehistoric ones at that. One called a Dunkleosteus. Whose idea was it to jump from aliens and spiders and other spooky creepy things to fish? We wonder if that has something to do with Watergate? Who knows? Once again, you have freed me. Number 13. Oh, to be fated to only work one season. With every death, the Duffer Brothers weigh heavily the effects it has on its characters. Well, Dustin is in for an interesting arc in season five, thanks to their choice to take out Eddie. They didn't make the decision lightly though, but the story basically demanded he not make it out alive. We're just glad he went down a hero and not a sacrifice like Vecna's earlier victims. Where's Eddie now? Number 14. This was the best last minute edition in the history of last minute editions. We almost didn't get that protective brother coded scene in the pizza joint from Jonathan and Will. They were mid filming with Jonathan looking in the rearview mirror at Will when they realized they needed a supportive big brother scene. 
We're glad to see Will isn't feeling as alone now, as alone as he has been since he disappeared into the Upside Down. And I'll always be here, no matter what, because you're my brother. Number 15. Imagine watching this show on VHS in the 80s. The Duffer Brothers are pushing hard for the audience to watch Stranger Things as if it's existing in that time period. They really want Netflix to release it on VHS. If not on VHS, to at least overlay it with that feel of the pan and scan. It will give a whole new nostalgia feel to the series. To be on the ball for four seasons now, we've got pretty good reassurance that the final season won't disappoint. Drop your theories about where the Upside Down came from in the comments. And thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.